Hey everybody, welcome to The Art of Comics. I'm your host, Angie Joe. It is late, the family's asleep, I'm all clean, it's time to record. I cut up a bunch of Collier's from 1950 for my scrap file. Let's take a look at some reference. So the reference file uh, is the classic artist's archive of knowledge. The scrap file is used for reference, for costumes, locations, for positions, for all the kind of things you want to use for reference in your art. I bought on eBay some old Colliers, a magazine that came around around the same time as Saturday Evening Post. And I got some on eBay in the 1950s. These are specifically 1950. And I'm really excited about them. They were a little pricey. I got them. I destroyed them. I cut them up. I know, it's sacrilege. And I pulled out the stuff that I thought was cool. Uh, a lot of times, you know, you use these for references of like positions, composition, things like that. But also, for these specifically, this is more reference for art style and artists. So let's go ahead and take a look at some reference. There you go. Let's take a look at Collier's reference episode. Are you ready? Okay, guys. Uh, thanks for watching the channel. I want to thank, first off, all the Patreons, uh, people out there, supporters, my Patreons. Appreciate you guys for supporting me, my own comics, my own stories and art. So that means a lot to me. And thank you guys for subscribing and liking the videos and commenting below. Um, the reference file or scrap file is kind of a classic that artists use. I kind of got into it because one of the reasons why I've been working on these famous artist courses, which we'll talk about these in another episode, and like lesson one talks about creating a reference file. And that's something that a lot of the old school illustrators did. And Howard Chaykin kind of got me into it too because he has a great file uh, collection. And so I said, you know what? I'm gonna start working on my own. And here we go. So let's go through some of these. These are really the reference. The reason why I'm pulling these is for looking at art technique and style and illustration, not necessarily something to crib off the item or the you know the position or use it for like direct reference on the drawing but it's more like looking at style and stuff like that so let's go ahead and take a look at some of these this is the cover this is a uh, 1950 december 30th i got this on ebay these on ebay i can't remember they were pretty penny but they weren't too much so um so I just want to show you that. So here's some, maybe what I'll do actually is I will go one by one like this. And we'll just take a look at these guys. So again, these are things I clipped out, right? So I just clipped these out. Um, Al Brule did this. This guy reminds me, Brule reminds me a lot of like uh, John Whitmore or Whitcomb rather. Reminds me of John uh, Whitcomb a lot. Or is it Colby Whitmore? Colby Whitmore, John Whitcomb. John Whitcomb. Uh, just the faces, the woman. Uh, I really like this kind of, this illustration style. Remember, this is a 50s, so it looks a little bit different than now. Here's another one I really dig. Um, I just like this here. This kind of gives me like a, a Gene Colon vibe or like a Toth or something like that vibe, which I dig. I dig a lot. Um, this is a great Al uh, Hirchenfeld. I dig this. I just love his his bold, thick line. He just just super organic. Uh, the curvature of everything is just so well done. Just the character. The, he is just, this is great, great stuff. I really dig this one a lot. Here's some more kind of cartoony stuff. I thought this was kind of nice because um, 
I just like these faces and I like this kind of the positioning of everything. I feel like it's it's kind of nice and simple. Uh, it works really well though. I think it it does uh, it just does a really good job of conveying this information. So I really dug these these guys here. Some of these we don't know the artist. Like I just don't know who this is, but this I really like these ink washes. Again, it reminds, it gives me a little blockiness of like of a Toth. I, he, Toth did not do this. I'm almost, pop, I mean, he couldn't have, this was like, well, 1950, I guess he could have, but he, there's no way he did because um, he wasn't doing this at the time. But I just like the, the shape here and, and just the way that looks. Just this kind of fun, fun piece. Here's another piece. Is this Albert Dorn? What was it? Who is this? No, it's Alfred Simkin. Okay. Reminding me a little bit of Alfred Dorn. So, probably would be even better colored, and I bet it was colored. But they just didn't. Color, they printed it on black and white, but I bet this was a, a, a colored painting. I really like the hands here. Most of the stuff is acrylics. I'll point out stuff that's not, but I would say probably most of all the stuff is acrylic work. These, this is cool. We're going to see a lot of these. This is a lot of what Illustrator's bread and butter was, were these, these car assignments that they would do. And these like Buicks and Mercury's and all that kind of stuff. And just some really great, great work. These, if you look at these, these are just really neat, man. And it's just got this, these beautiful, this airbrushing. It's just so, so cool. I just really dig, dig these a lot. It's just really neat paintings. And the originals are probably 24 by 30 or something. They're pretty big, these boards. And usually they were done on like illustration board. Um, if you watch the show Mad, Mad Men, you'll see <clears throat> that art team will, will, will show, you'll see some of those kind of boards that they do and that's kind of what this is. Here you get some more. I just, but I just love this stuff. It's just so clean. It's just so cool, just the way it all comes out. Yeah, this is, that's great. I would love to know the timetable. Like how long does it take to do something like that? Here's another one. I dig this. Again, I'm probably not gonna use these for like, oh, I'm gonna like draw a bunch of these, these cars. I'm probably, that's probably not the case. It's more like, hey, I wanna learn how to airbrush this and how to like replicate this in some way. And I think that's, that's, that's what it's kinda good for, just to kinda like study a technique, you know? That's my take at least. That's what I'm kind of like coming at it with. Okay. I feel like I'm a teacher in a, like an art class where we're like going through overhead slides. Uh, <laughs> this is James uh, Dwyer. Do I, I'm gonna say Dwyer. I really like the brush. I like to see the brush strokes. <laughs> It gives it just that little bit of, this little bit of ex expressionistic kind of like feel when you see the kind of technique in there. So I really just like the the way this is done. This reminds me again of like a little bit of Dorn, but more like Fawcett, kind of the way Robert Fawcett would do stuff. But I like the positioning here. Great values too, really great darks here with that. This, this is a good piece. Let me look at this, yeah. I might have kept this. Sometimes I gotta look on both sides because sometimes I'll look at stuff and I'm like, oh, I like that, but then. So I could keep this for costume ideas, just for like 50 suits, kind of the texture, the types of ties, okay? Uh, but also maybe I did this for this. So where we got some really cool little like paintings. I really like the lighting on this. This is really good too. Again, don't know the artist of these, but I really dig them. I'm a fan. Um, here's another great two page spreads. What I love about these colliers is they're so big. It makes it hard for the, when I put it, 
in my binder, but look at this. Isn't this great? By Fred Banbury. And I don't know Fred Banbury. I haven't heard of him, but I really like these watercolors he does. We got a couple of pieces uh, in these magazines with his stuff, but this is really pretty. Just really like the way the work is done. No lines here, just the watercolor coming onto the page. You know, it's kind of wet on wet. I really dig that. And this face here. And there's layers. There, he's putting multiple layers of color in here in this face and the skin tone. Really dig this. This is a great piece. I like that a lot. Here's kind of more of a two tone cartoon kind of drawing. I just like the way these figures are done. Simple, clear, communicates well. I like this. Okay, here's another issue. This is in November of the same year. <clears throat> I wish I knew who did this. In fact, does it say? Oh, it doesn't say. There might be another page where it did say. Usually the, the cover artist is acknowledged. Oh wait, here it is. It is Roy, dang it, something, Midston, Madison, Roy something, darn it. I like this, I love the colors. Looks like watercolor too. Neat composition, yeah. I like this just because of these this dress here, and I just for some reason it's very simple, uh, very kind of economic on the lines. That was cool. Here's another one of those cars we we're talking about before. So here's kind of a cool little car. Again. If you go on Instagram, you'll see a bunch of like pinstripe artists and airbrush guys who do these kind of things still. So this is like a art into itself and it's still done a lot. These like car paintings and stuff. And it's just like this old school like illustration of automobiles. And, and automobiles is where the money was <clears throat> for this kind of stuff. I dig it. I like it a lot. This is kind of fun. This, uh, uh, who did this? I wrote it down. It's uh, Warren Bum, uh, Baumgartner. Bom Baumgartner. Uh, I like this a lot. I love this cat. It looks really good. Again, I like the values. I do like the way it's kind of rough. It's a kind of rough look. Same artist here. This is really good too. Yeah, I like I like his his brushwork. This is, looks like definitely the acrylics. It's kind of fun, little like dry brush, little texture on there. And I like the colors. This is kind of nice. These purple and yellow complementary kind of work out well. I think that looks nice. <clears throat> Some great art. You know, this is it's like 50, this is like 70 years old art. It's great. Look at this. Look at this piece. Can I see this good? Yeah. <clears throat> Look at this. Just a lot of things going on here. A lot of different techniques. I mean, this is like, it looks like it was probably printed in different ways. You got this red inked, you know, figure here. You've got this movement here, which is kind of like drawn almost differently. Then you got a really heavily textured, detailed door. You got these very graphic like hangers that put this into space. It's really kind of interesting. These, there's very much a layered, you know, uh, almost stenciled in different <clears throat> things. I dig this a lot. This is by Michael Mitchell. Big fan of that one. Oh yeah. Now this guy, another, another guy. This looks so much like John John Whitcomb. I gotta find out if this guy, if if Whitcomb like took him because this looks like John Whitcomb right here. This is like classic, or maybe like even Al Parker. 
This is the guy before them. This is Lionel Gilbert. Lionel Gilbert, man, he was doing it. He's the guy. Classic, really kind of like 50s art couple romance. Beautiful woman, usually blonde. You know, guys always in a suit, always in these kind of like positionings with a very kind of like pastel background with some colorful decorative things sparsely placed yet strategically placed. Um, I like it. I couldn't do it. Uh, <laughs> and so that's that's one of the things I, I if I can do it, then I don't like it as much. <laughs> so yeah, I dig that a lot. This was one that I really dug because of the, uh, just the kind of cartoony, exaggerated lines and stuff here. I thought this was just really uh, expressive kind of line quality. These big brushes he's using, and these hands. Yeah, I, I dig the positions of all this. I thought this was really great. Don't know who the artist is on this, fortunately. Here's another car. We can have lots of cars, guys. The cool little Jeep. There's a lot of detail in this, though. If you look at this, this is hard to do. All these, not only like the highlights and the airbrush stuff, but there's a lot of stuff going on here. The figures are well done. It's really good. I dig it. Okay, keep it going. We've got a lot. Kind of a cool little ad for antifreeze. And this is by, who is that? Robert Moore. <clears throat> Robert Moore is the artist for this. Here's the cover for this one in October. Oh, this is done by Burn Hill. Burn Hill, who I don't know. This has got that kind of a <clears throat> kind of graphic style starting to come into it, right? Just really blocky, just shapes, no outlines. Just using the colors as the, as the you know, the, the, the delineator of the line and buildings, kind of like it. Here's a little bit more, uh, a little more texture. And this is, who's this? This is Francis Chase, a little ad for Coke. We're going to definitely see more Coke ads and booze ads. It's all about the liquids in the cars, guys. I like these washes. This is something that I did for Pariah, Missouri. I just like the way these, this looks. A great contrast here. The lighting. I like the modeling on the face. It's good, good stuff. something I normally wouldn't put in here, but I don't know, for some reason I thought it'd be fun. Also, if, if I did need any kind of reference for this kind of period, this would be good good for looking at costumes and stuff, but that's well done. A little whiskey. This is fun, just because I like, these. this reminds me of those old, uh, they're actually kind of popular now, these posters for the national parks. <clears throat> This looks like the same artist, or at least the same style. And this is, the artist is, uh, oof. Bay, Bay, uh, Byron is the last name. Can't, can't make out the first name. But I like that. Santa Fe, yeah, that looks over there by Grand Canyon area. It's another good one. Just like it, I like, I just like this. <laughs> I like the sleeve. I like, I mean, this is comic book art, right? Illustration, what I'm, what I'm doing here, you guys, is we're talking about the art of comics, but it's the, it's the art of comics. Comics and illustration, it's like hand in hand, man. A lot of these illustrators from this era did comics. Usually they did comics first, and then they went from doing comics into like illustration because it paid more. Uh, some went to animation, right? Like Alex Tove. But it's like art, Comics, illustration, it's all that kind of commercial world. So I want to show this because this this is like the kind of comic book stuff you would see in a comic, right? This this kind of art. 
So it's something to like to study and know about. You know, you won't have big pan. You won't have tons of panels like this, which is like fully illustrated. That looks like a almost, uh, you know, like a photograph. You won't have that, but you might have it for a cover, or it's the same guy who could do this and also do some line drawings, right? Some pen and ink stuff. So, so. Um, I appreciate it and I can kind of see how it's connected. And then you also have a lot of cartoons where, where you have stuff like this, which is by, this is William Von, Von Ring. And here we're getting into that, well, it's a cartoon, the daily strip, that kind of thing. Which I like this a lot, I like the energy of this, the lines. This is fun because it incorporates, you know, this heavily rendered car which is the most important thing with this kind of this cartoonish, you know, 50s cool animated look, which I like a lot. You know, Jetsons kind of thing. Here's another, uh, this artist is Bernie Ledick. And uh, I like that. Again, all the cars. Yeah, this was kind of cool. This is, this almost looks like a, like a, um, Joe Joe Kubert type of a uh, kind of sketches and stuff from war and uh, the artist is uh, oh um, hard Brody dig that here's some more James Dyer also known as John Wickham <laughs> it's not John Wickham but tell me if it is not comment below if this this guy does not remind you of John Wickham. I'm sorry, it does. It's like the same freaking color palette, the same positions of faces. It's like his alter ego. Oh, here's another one of these. Um, Hirschfeld. Yeah, look at this stuff. This is really great, you guys. This is just something that you can just study. The characterization, the faces, boils it down to the most simple shapes. But look how three-dimensional, look how, how much depth there is in this. It's just really well done. Extremely well done. Yeah, he, he was a master. I mean, he's considered probably one of the best well-known guys. Here's Tran Mawick. Um, I like this too. Oh, this one is a two page, right? Yeah. This is another. This is uh, Anthony Saras. Anytime we're combining different techniques in one single page or image, I really like. So I like the kind of simple line drawing mixed in with this collage uh, of plants and colored here. So I just, this is a nice composition. I just, it's kind of attractive to me. So I dug this a lot. And it's a story by Ray Bradbury. So that's kind of cool. Nothing wrong with that. I met him once at Comic Con. Didn't know who he was. Until someone goes, dude, that's Ray Bradbury. Don't you know anything? Uh, more of the cars, which you gotta love. Here's another one with the jet. Noel Sickles, who I love, did some of these, um, these car things. I wonder if some of these are Noel Sickles. It could be. I don't know when they started getting their signatures on these ads, but... And this... This could be Norman Rockwell, but I'm not sure. So we're not going to say it's Norman Rockwell. It could be someone else. But you know, Norman Rockwell did a lot of these Coca-Cola ads. And it looks like it could be him. But there were a lot of painters around this time that did something similar. So I'm not going to say it was him, but... Uh, the faces, you know, this has got that vibe. If it is, it's early. It's like 1950, right? So it's pretty early Rockwell stuff, if it is him. Could be. Another ward bracket. Just like the positioning of this. You know, this was all, he f used photographs to, to lay this all out. You kind of can tell, but I dig it. I actually like the pajamas, how that works out. No black lines, it's all just painted. You know, it's all illustrated. I like these little two-tone, these little, these things. This one's kind of fun, and I like this one too. 
This is more, I think, for um, co for more like costuming. Here's another ward bracket. I like this stuff. I really do. I think the faces are great. I like this kind of kind of thing. I like it when the colors too is like they pop out of it. Um, kind of exciting. I dig that. This I took for costumes. So this is like when I got like, okay, I want to see some guys, you know, how they're going to be dressed with their vests and their sleeves rolled up. Same thing with this. This is more for like younger kids, costuming. Oh, here's, here's some, one of my favorite artists is Harry Beckoff. There is no book of Harry Beckoff. His stuff was so damn good. It really was great. He did these line drawings, this kind of contour line drawing with heavy detail and, and, and th three-dimensional space background and um, great faces and bodies. He was one, he's one of my favorites actually. I got turned on by him by uh, Chapin. He's another one was Anthony Cyrus. Really like this. I like the um, kind of outline of the tree kind of the detail of all these little branches. And this black, your eye just goes boom. This is a great study in composition. It's like, boom, we're here. And what's going on? And your eyes are kind of like swirling around these things, right? It's kind of going this way. It's coming up this way. Yeah. It's great colors too. It's just really, really good. I think that one a lot. What's this? This is more costumes, just the, hat I wanted to get. Okay, I think this is the last last magazine. This is Christmas. Two days before Christmas. So we're going to get some Christmas stuff probably in this issue. Here's an Albert Dorn. You can tell Albert Dorn by the faces. He always has this kind of whimsy kind of face. Very expressionistic. Very kind of like big, you know, Cart he's got that cartoon kind of uh, positioning and gesture, but then he puts on top of that cartoon gesture this like heavily like painted, rendered, illustrated painting on top of it, which is really kind of cool. I dig that a lot. Michael Berry, I like this too. This is really cool like drawing. Here's some more costume, and look at that, isn't that gorgeous? I love this. Even her too. So, yeah, I like that. I'm like, I gotta get this. This would be something I'd actually wouldn't mind just like drawing this directly. Here's a Rockwell. We talked about Rockwell before. Yeah, you just can't, you, you can't deny Rockwell's ability to render these faces and render these people. And I read somewhere that it's a, it's a story. You know, every painting is a story, and every person here, and every expression is a story, and he just does just a great job. He's, you know, I'm not like, he's not my favorite. He's not like, I'm not super high on him, but I get it, I get it. He is, he's a master, no doubt. Totally different style, but I really like this. I like these, these kind of darker, these kind of tone, almost like colored charcoal, it feels like. You know what, this could have been the style of where they do it all in black and white and they put a layer of color on top of it. It might be that, this is the name of that. Pruitt Carter to this. Also known as John Whitcomb. <laughs> uh, is it go to this? Hang on. These go together? Yeah, sorry, they go together. I gotta tape these together. Yeah, I like these. With the faces. It's all about the faces and the colors. Here's some more Harry Bit. Um, some more of Harry Be uh, Beckoff work. Yeah, I like this a lot. This would be something fun to just like frame. Put this in something to frame it. It's just so good. Look at the faces. Just look at that face. Look at her face right there. I mean, there's just so much emotion in these things. Really good. I should frame that. 
don't know where I put it. Is it weird to frame a picture of a magazine? Um, I like that. Does it go here? Oh, it goes together. Yeah, look at that. Isn't that great? Great watercolor. Good stuff. Okay. This is just some reference I wanted. This, these tanks. I thought that was kind of nice. And then we got a picture of Ike. And then, uh, who's Montgomery? Yeah, so I wanted some of the costuming. And the, oh, this is the cover for that one. So there you go. So there you go. There's about four, four or five polyers. This is what you do. You chop them up and you uh, keep them. I file them up and I do that. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. I appreciate it. Have a good night. And uh, I'll talk to you guys next time. Every Tuesday, every Saturday, sometimes on Thursdays. Art of Comics. Check it out. Thanks, guys. Bye.